Hey there, girlfriend. I'm Donna Hoffman. They call me the interior design advocate because I advocate on behalf of design lovers everywhere to help you wipe out the ugly room, get rid of the disappointing result, get rid of that room where the ideas in your head are just falling flat. Okay, so here's what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to be talking to you about the underestimated locked power, unleashed power of interior design furniture space plans that are drawn. On a computer, by hand, doesn't matter. But these babies are power tools. And if you are not getting the design results that you want in your home, you got to start getting serious about using tools that are in the available toolkit for you. So what's the whole deal with interior design and furniture space plans? Furniture space plans do a lot of things. but couple of the really important things they do is they show you what works and why, what doesn't work and why. It gives you your final furniture count not only by the number of pieces but the type of piece and what's the maximum size armchair that fits in your living room. Is it 32 wide? Is it 36 wide? How deep can it be? There is so much discovery that happens just with your furniture space plan so that you can decide what ideas might work. In fact, I want to show you an example of a space plan exploration that helped a family decide, can we do bookcases that we want in this beautiful new living room? Can we add our existing baby grand piano? And can we reuse all of our existing furniture? So let's do this. OK, so let me orient you on this plan. At the top of the plan, you see built-ins listed. Those are built-in bookcases. And notice that they're drawn outside the room. Hint, that's because they don't fit inside the room. And this is how I'm able to show that on this plan. And at the bottom of the plan, you'll see where there's that 90-inch long arrow. That's how you enter this living room from the foyer. OK, notice that we have a big baby grand piano in the upper left-hand corner of this plan and all the other furniture and rugs with the exception of one piece of furniture coated red that's a great trick that i recommend you use when you are reusing furniture in a plan color it a different color so you can immediately look at it and say ah that's right i don't have to buy that that doesn't go into the line item budget as a a, a spend that's a nice zero out but anyway in this plan, we could get the baby grand in, we could reuse a lot of existing furniture, but uh-uh, cannot use built-in bookcases. Well, we wanted to get everything in this room, so let's look at this plan. Now, notice we can get in the built-in bookcases. We could keep the baby grand piano in the room. We had to move its location, but now we had to buy new furniture because the existing sofa and chairs was just too big. So this was a viable option, but the family said, no, we don't really want to buy that much new furniture, and we really want to be able to see that baby grand piano when we're standing in the foyer looking into the living room. OK, let's try another exploration. So now take a look at something else we showed. This is built-in bookcases on either side of the fireplace that really push that baby grand pretty far into the room. And in order to keep adequate pass-through into the room around the furniture, we had to really put the soft seating, meaning sofa and chairs, right alongside the right-hand side of the room. We had to block the fireplace. This is a non-viable plan. It's a terrible plan. And that's why at the top of the page, it's even marked non-viable plan. But sometimes you need to show, in my case, a client, and in your case, working on yourself with yourself, you need to show yourself or your significant other, hey, this is why this doesn't work. You want to have this amount of seating in this room it, we're gonna, and all these other elements, it just doesn't work. So now take a look at what we ended up doing where we removed the piano from the room. The built-ins actually stayed in their places. We were able to use a lot of the existing furniture. We just used less of it, and we added some new tables, a new cocktail table, some new sidearm tables. So there you've got it. Measured space plans are power tools. And if you'd like to see what the finished room looks like, here you go. But the beauty of that measured space plan is it tells you what fits, what works, what doesn't work, what, what you need, your item count, as well as your sizes, to name a few. 
So there you have it, girlfriend. If you want to get rid of overwhelm and confusion, stop throwing your power away. Start doing those measured space plans.